President Trump, as we mentioned, heading to South Korea on Tuesday after that visit in Japan that delivered no concrete results on fixing what he calls unfair trade. Despite an apparently warm relationship with Shinzo Abe, an agreement on a hard line with North Korea, Trump won no concessions on the $69 billion trade deficit with Japan. Joining us now from Tokyo is Ichiro Fujisaki, former Japanese ambassador to the U.S. So, Ambassador, let me ask you this first. How do you think Abe did this time around with Trump? Hello. I think uh, this was as expected, very dense schedule, and uh, uh, discussed uh, North Korea and sent a very strong message. At the same time, uh, discussed uh, economic issues, but said that we have a proper channel uh, between uh, Vice President and uh, Deputy Prime Minister, so we'll uh, let them uh, uh, con uh, continue the discussion. So I think this was exactly as designed by both sides. Uh, it seemed that way, and you know, Trump has boasted and continues to boast of his warm relationship with Shinzo Abe, saying that you know, you and I get along. We both hold the title of uh, of uh, you know uh, of leader of our, of our countries, and you know, it, he, he seems to really admire him. Did you feel like that relationship grew at all during this visit, or or did it stay the same? Uh, I, I think it grew. Yes, uh, I think. Uh, Three elements that uh, maybe he doesn't uh, uh, have with other leaders uh, of Asia. One, in this country, we have emperor, and uh, he paid a call on emperor, and everyone saw that on television and thought that that was, that was a respect from U.S. Uh, president to Japanese emperor. Second, he played golf with uh, Shinzo Abe and had lunch and also had dinner twice and uh, really uh, that was uh, very uh, uh, sort of uh, sh showing to the world that the, uh, they are special friends. Thirdly, uh, he met uh, the uh, family of uh, abductees, abducted pe uh, people, and uh, that showed that he's very sympathetic to these causes. And I think uh, these were carefully designed and I think that was uh, very well sent off the message. Yeah, he really kind of showed a, a, a bit of compassion there and brought it back to Ottawa Beer, of course, uh, earlier this year, that yes. incident that happened for the U.S. as well. Ambassador, uh, those are the nice touches, of course, from the president. I, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the gaffes, I guess, we heard from the press conference. And I want you to hear uh, just a bit of a comment that we heard from President Trump here on Japan. The Japanese people are thriving. Your cities are vibrant. And you've built one of the world's most powerful economies. I don't know if it's as good as ours. I think not. Okay? And we're going to try and keep it that way. But you'll be second. <laughs> of course, you see a little bit of a smirk coming from the president. So joking, you know, it was all jokes, it well, seems, uh, but joking aside, in terms of diplomacy, though, I just wanted to get your take on this, Ambassador. This seems a little bit condescending. Yeah, well, uh, that was uh, Mr. Trump's way of uh, presenting the issues. But at the same time, as you have seen on the press conference, uh, Mr. Abe stated very clearly that uh, after January this year, after uh, Mr. Trump has uh, come to be in presidency, Jap uh, Japanese companies have uh, cr uh, invested and created 100, uh, I'm sorry, 17,000 jobs, and now altogether have uh, uh, 860,000 jobs in the United States, direct uh, jobs, right. and also uh, he said uh, at one point uh, that if, uh, more than 60% of U.S. deficit was coming from trade with Japan, but now it's down to 9.3%. He made it this very clear in front of president, and I think that message has got through. But, you know, he, he mentioned this while he was in J Japanese soil. You know, what message does that actually send, not just to Japan, but to the world on how the U.S. administration views its allies, though? Yes, and... Uh, I think uh, that's, as I said, that's Mr. Trump's way. By the way, yeah. if I may take this chance to talk about automobiles, uh, uh, the, uh, your reporter from Korea said uh, when you go to Korea, uh, Korea uh, the, uh, those cars uh, uh, seen in uh, Seoul are all the old Kias and Hyundai and the Korean cars. If you come to Tokyo, in the central Tokyo, Newly registered cars, passenger cars, 40%, more than 40% are foreign cars. However, unfortunately, it's European cars. 
Mercedes, BMW, and not American cars. It's true because the uh, steering wheel is on different side, and also it's a little too big for Japanese narrow streets. And so uh, I think a lot of Japanese would go to American <laughs> cars if they make cars for Japan. Right. That's ah. th that. That seems to be the defense, right, of uh, of the Japanese for why uh, they're not <laughs> buying more U.S. cars because we're not making cars that 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 are good enough in Japan. Well, uh, as I said, uh, it's a little too big, and the steering wheel, um, uh, European cars are making it for Japan on the <laughs> left, uh, the steering wheel on the uh, right-hand side as well. It's not only that, but uh, I think there are standards as well, and I think we'll look at those standards as well right. and discussing. So it's all, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, established a very proper channel between Vice President and uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, and that, I think, has met already twice and they'll be meeting and in that uh, forum or fora where we'll be discussing uh, many issues uh, in uh, different committees as well. All right, uh, Ichiro Fujisaki, thank you so much, former Japanese ambassador. Thank uh, you very much. The thank US. you very much.